Uh, Richard, we can't hear you. There you go. Good evening. I'm Richard Waller, Executive Director of the University of Richmond Museums. The University Museums comprise three museums on our campus. The Joel and Lila Harnett Museum of Art, the Joel and Lila Harnett Print Study Center, and the Laura Robbins Gallery of Design from Nature. Welcome to our program, Memories and Inspiration in Art Collecting, a conversation with Mr. Carrie Davis, Mrs. C. Betty Davis, President Ronald Crutcher, and Dr. Betty Neal Crutcher. It is presented in conjunction with the exhibition, Memories and Inspiration, the Carrie and C. Betty Davis Collection of African American Art. This remarkable exhibition is on view in the Harnett Museum of Art, August 28th through November 20th, 2020. The exhibition features 62 artworks from an art collection amassed over a period of 35 years by collectors Carrie and Betty Davis. Guided by a passion for collecting and by their own extensive knowledge of art, as well as a desire to preserve cultural memories and inspire their community, the Davises have amassed one of the richest private collections of African American art in the world. Organized and, and toured by international arts and artists in Washington, D.C., the exhibition was coordinated by N. Elizabeth Schlater, Deputy Director and Curator of Exhibitions, University <laughs> Museums. The exhibition is made possible in part with support from the University of Richmond's Cultural Affairs Committee and with funds from the Lewis S. Booth Arts Fund. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Schleider. I'm the Deputy Director and Curator of Exhibitions at University of Richmond Museums. And I did have the great pleasure of working on the installation of the Memories and Inspiration Exhibition um, here at the University Museums. Um, and I also got to know the Davises a little bit through their collection. Carrie Davis is a native of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, he's a former Sergeant of the United States Air Force, a retired carrier with the US Postal Service and an ordained deacon. He began collecting art in the mid 1980s in partnership with his wife, Betty, a former television news director and producer. The Davis's collection has grown to over 300 works by some of the most distinguished African-American artists of the 20th century. Throughout the past few decades, the Davis's have happily sacrificed material goods and comforts in order to surround themselves with the drawings, paintings, prints and sculptures they loved, as well as to support the work of artists they admire and befriend. The Memories and Inspiration Traveling Exhibition is their way of sharing some of the highlights of their collection with art lovers outside of Atlanta. The collection includes artworks created as early as the 1930s and as late as 2015, including works by artists such as Radcliffe Bailey, Romare Bearden, Beverly Buchanan, Elizabeth Catlett, Sam Gilliam, Jacob Lawrence, Gordon Parks, Alma Thomas, and Charles White. On this slide, you see a portrait of the collector, Mr. Davis, now a retired postal worker, by the artist Larry Walker. Mr. Walker is a distinguished artist based in Georgia whose works are in the collections of the High Museum of Art, the Studio Museum in Harlem, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and the Los Angeles County Museum of Art. And a few weeks ago, Richard and I had the opportunity to interview Mr. Davis, who in addition to being an acclaimed artist is an influential lifelong educator and mentor. Um, this artwork is on view in the exhibition and that recorded conversation is posted on the University Museum's website. Our other guests this evening are Dr. Ronald Crutcher and Dr. Betty Neal Crutcher. Dr. Ron Crutcher is the 10th president of the University of Richmond. He is a national leader in higher education, a distinguished classical musician, and an accomplished administrator. He was the founding co-chair of the Liberal Education and America's Promise, the Association of American Colleges and Universities national campaign to demonstrate the value of liberal education. He is a former member of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra and several other orchestras and currently serves on the board of the Richmond Symphony. Dr. Betty Neal Crutcher consults and leads workshops for organizations and institutions in cross-cultural men cross mentoring. She has served on the board of the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts since 2016 and is the vice chair of the VMFA's Education Committee. She's a member of the Finance Committee and a former member of the Acquisitions Subcommittee. Both Drs. Crutcher are supporters of the arts and are arts collectors themselves. 
In fact, Dr. Betty Crutcher has collected art since the early 1970s as a graduate student at the University of Michigan, where she was inspired by the annual arts festival near campus. Both Drs. Crutcher generously share their collection with the U of R community by displaying it in their home and office. We are going to get to this conversation right now, but I'll ask any attendees to please submit uh, questions in the Q&A function of Zoom. And we'll have time at the end of our discussion to um, post these to our panelists. So, but um, for now, we'll start off with a question from Richard. Okay, uh, glad, glad to start the conversation. What is the most meaningful artwork in your collection and how did you acquire it? Um, well, uh, good evening, everyone, first and foremost. Uh, uh, most meaningful. The most meaningful uh, artwork in our collection, you have it right there. It's uh, the Jacob Lawrence from the Builder series. It's a, a, a graphite drawing. And uh, why it's the most meaningful. Uh, Jacob Lawrence was my introduction to art uh, and to collecting art. Uh, during, during that time, Jacob Lawrence and Romare Bearden was the, the names in the forefront that I didn't uh, know about artists, but I mean, didn't see much about, you know, who's who in African-American art or whatever, whatever. but uh, it was Jacob Lawrence's work that introduced me to uh, the art or got me interested in it. I um, call myself, that's a, from the Carpenter series or Builder series. And uh, when I was uh, discharged from the Air Force, I worked as a carpenter, a carpenter's apprentice. So. My father was a, not a, he worked in the steel mills, but he was a handyman. So we, uh, we were kind of repair person. So uh, carpentry appealed to me and that particular work appealed to me. So it will uh, always be our favorite. When my mother passed mm -hmm. away, uh, each of the children, there's six of us, got just a little stipend of insurance. And I said that uh, I wanted to buy something to uh, commemorate my mother's death, our, our relationship. I was her handyman. I would put the screens in the screen doors, and that type of thing. So, you know, first I thought I would pay off all of my bills. Mm -hmm. but then I thought in 30 days I'd be broke and be right back in debt again. So I used that money and put some with it. And that's what I came up with uh, that particular piece. So it'll always be my favorite. Uh, graphite actually is my favorite me medium, you know, regular old number two pencil. I think if you can handle that, you can handle anything. So that's it. <laughs> uh, how about you, uh, uh, Dr. Crutcher? Do you have a... Well, I, I, I have one. I think we each have a different one. For me, it would be... Uh, you can see this, this portrait, yes. that's a card of the portrait. So that is a portrait of me when I was much younger and I had hair and didn't have a, uh, and I had a beard or sideburns at the time. <laughs> um, this was done by the German artist Gerhard Keller in 1973. Uh, he came to my debut recital in Germany and um, he asked me after the recital now, I should also add, he wasn't someone, he wasn't a random person. He, uh, he was married to someone that I knew, the woman who ran the Experiment for International Living, in which I had previously taken part. And so I, I had been to their home, so I, I, I knew him. But he said, I'd love to do a portrait of you. Um, you know, can we arrange that? And I said, sure, let me do it. And, and to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be a more representational portrait. I hadn't really seen him. I didn't know a lot. I hadn't seen a lot of his art until then. And, and to be honest with you, when I first saw it, I was a bit taken aback by it. But uh, over the years, I've grown to love it. And because in 1979, when uh, Betty and I were married, he and his wife presented it to us as a wedding gift. So it's very, 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 very special. And it's in, it's here in my office. Um, and I had these cards made because I love it so much. <laughs> you know, before I um, share with you one of my most meaningful pieces, and if every piece is meaningful to me, 
Uh, Betty, I was wondering if you had a piece that was meaningful to you. Oh, yes, I have a few. You know, some people say, what's your favorite? It's like picking the favorite child. We have two children and like, who, who's the favorite? They both are the favorites. But I, um, a few years ago, well, many years ago, the artist uh, Del Sart did a piece of my husband presented to me for a gift. And it was a me, like um, Dr. Um, it, like, it was me as a, Carrie had a picture of me with a hat on, like the church lady. So it, he, it was a really wonderful portrait he did of me and Del Sart left us earlier this year. So that's one of the favorites. Well, you nice. know, you, you mentioned the word children and I was thinking that one of our, one of my most meaningful um, prototypes, I think it, it's called, is um, monotype prints. Is mm. Richard, I think that you hung it for us. And this is this is the one by a Nigerian painter. Uh, I don't know whether you can see it very well. It well, looks it. It. well enough, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and the name is? His name is Tunji Adini Jones. Okay, say that three times. <laughs> I had to practice. That's when I touched on and said, would you pronounce the name, please? <laughs> but anyway, Tunji, we, we refer to him lovingly, is a young man that we met when he was about nine years nine old. Nine or ten years old. And wow. he was from oh, wow. Island, which... We were at, on St. Lucia, we were on vacation. And uh, long, so that was... Well, in about 17 years ago. Yeah. And, 2004. Yeah. So now in the year of 2017, we uh, visit Tunji at Yale. He, uh -huh. uh, he graduated from Yale in the MFA program. And we wanted to do something to honor his graduation and to honor our relationship with his family. So we bought one of his paintings. And oh. Aaron. He was so excited. <laughs> one because he was broke, probably. <laughs> <laughs> and we just thought, well, this is a wonderful way to to honor this young man who we had known for 15 plus years. And to, it sort of sent him on, you know, sure. believing that there were greater things to come. And indeed, there were. In fact, uh, his, uh, his uh, paintings and monotypes are now being exhibited in multiple galleries, including London and right. New York and Los Angeles and Stockholm. And most recently, he was named in the Forbes 30 Under 30 wow. in the 2020 class. And he was selected in the inaugural class of Kehinde Wiley's Black Rock Senegal Artist uh, Regency. Um, so we are so proud to own this piece and uh, that served as the foundation for what has become an extremely uh, exciting and promising new career for our young artist, Brett. Oh, wonderful. You know, what, what a great investment. You, you made a point, you hit on a point uh, there, and it was that you supported him when he was very young, when he started. That's so important because uh, it's most important to support artists uh, when they have a need. Yes. You mm -hmm. said he was broke. Uh, we've done the same thing to where uh, you just don't know. They, they may need money for supplies mm -hmm. uh, of what, whatever that need be, but uh, he sounds like he's well on his way now. But I'm sure he'll always remember that small investment you made early on. You know? yeah. And I mean, his father, who passed away uh, in, the, in the last year, uh, it was a medical doctor and his mother is a lawyer, so broke in the most current way. But uh, uh, he was starting uh, yeah, his life. Uh, correct. <laughs> <laughs> but, he was a walk. I'll back up. <laughs> But that still was encouraging for him for you. It was very yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. And then to go back, that's wonderful. Yeah. And you know what? It fits in with the theme, memories and inspiration. Because we will always have the memory when we first met. And now when we see him as part of 
Kehinde Wiley's legacy, uh, having been um, honored to go off to study his art and then to have the uh, statue of Kehinde Wiley right in front of the board that I serve on, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. All of those connections over the years pertaining to art. Oh, well, I'll, I'll pipe in with another question that just kind of flows from that, because one of the things I hear most commonly from collectors, when people ask, how do you advise collecting? They'll say it has to mean something to you. You have to have a personal relationship to it, but um, which you've all just shared. So I'm going to ask you the two part question. Why do you think it's important to collect art? And then how have you educated yourself about art and artists? Uh, who you want to start? <laughs> oh, I don't know if you want to go first. Oh, okay, I'll start. Uh, why is it important to collect art? Uh, for me, um, uh, you know, personally, I love to control my environment and uh, collecting art helps me, uh, like when I come home to relax. Um, it's, 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 it can be therapeutic, it can be cathartic <laughs> yes. uh, at times or, or de-stressor. Um, it, you know, depending on what it is, it helps me, uh, it, it grounds me because it, uh, some of the works you remind me of my own history, of my own story. So it's, it's important to me in, in that respect. Um, collecting art in general, um, you know, artists have a purpose in, in this life. Uh, uh, they tell a story. Um, and I think it's important for that uh, story to be told. So to continue, uh, continue in that vein or to keep that story out there, I think, uh, you know, even for, for those to come to enjoy, it's important to support and collect art. Also, in, in terms of things being art being meaningful, this piece behind us uh, reminds me of home. I'm from Philly, and this artist is from Philly, Mo Brooker. And Carrie and I had an opportunity to spend time with him in his studio. And I, before I met him in person, I just fell in love with his work. It reminds me of, you know, the Philly streets, graffiti. Um, so I, I think it's really, uh, to Carrie's point, it's, it's better when you can live with it and it means something to you. Oh, Scott, what was the second part of that question? So it was, how have you educated yourself about art and artists? Oh, oh. well, um, I started off with catalogs. Uh, they've been most helpful. Um, I visit museums. And, and particularly helpful was the uh, collection at Clark Atlanta University. Mm. Uh, there was a collection established there in 1947. They had the Negro Art Annuals. So, uh, you know, uh, African Americans did not have many venues to show in. And uh, that was one of a few that they did. And uh, uh, first class, uh, the school would acquire the first prize, first place winners. And uh, so over the years, uh, they, they really have this tremendous collection. And um, that's how I was aware of some of the older artists who, who are no longer here. But uh, we, we do artist visits, you know, as, um, and get to know artists. Mm -hmm. They can explain their art to us. And uh, there are certain things that I like about some of the paintings, but I can't articulate it, but they can. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a very personal experience for me as far as uh, how we get to know and, and you know, and there it, it may lead to a purchase. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I, I, I actually, um, I, I love to have art surrounding me. I grew, I grew up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and in, uh, in elementary school, uh, I had a chance to visit on many occasions to the Cincinnati Art Museum, a great art museum. And uh, I fell in love then with the, you know, the classic paintings there. And I've always had an affinity for the beauty. I mean, I'm an artist, a cellist my, myself. And uh, at one time, actually considered, I thought about becoming an architect. 
Um, and so for me, it's important to have the art in the home because I have a visceral response to it. There's certain certain pieces that are my friends. I mean, in addition to this portrait, I mean, there's a there's a set of four pieces we have by Ellen Price from her, an African American artist uh, who was a colleague at Miami University. Every time I walk by those, and they're they're, they're portraits, they're part the daguerreotypes of her of her family, of her biracial family, but they have part of the head cut off. And every time I go by there, I think about my own family just because it's, you know, it's a family oriented. So they're my friends. And there's some other pieces that I can tell you in the in the, the house that are my friends. And and the reason why it's important is because um, I really want to, I want to support the artists. I mean, we have a lot of friends who are artists. Uh, and, and in addition to Tunji, we have many other, other, other people as well. Um, and I know as an artist myself, how important it is to support, uh, to, to support young artists. And basically I, I've informed myself particularly by reading and talking and getting to know the artists well and talking to them, listening to them explain to me their whole process and what, how, how they go about uh, their work. And of course, again, that interests me as a, as a musician as well. You know, when I left uh, Tuskegee, Alabama and uh, Tuskegee Institute, I went to the University of Michigan and I met some uh, very interesting people who became my mentors. One uh, is Dr. Rosalind McClendon. And she had art all over her house. I, it was like being, being in a museum. Yeah. And Carrie, that's what you, to your point that sometimes the only museum that your friends would see would be in your home. And so I was introduced to art in a very unique and different way because the four of us in particular can recite what was on most black people's walls when we were growing up. <laughs> and, and who were that we can do it collectively. It was Martin Luther King. King. <laughs> That was the trinity. The trinity. That was, oh, that's right. <laughs> he introduced to a black woman who had uh, the value of having this artwork that she was co had collected uh, from many artists in Detroit, very similar to Carrie to what you have shared about your relationship to the artist. And so I then uh, was inspired uh, by the, the, these uh, exposures and experiences that I had, not only with Roz, but with these cross-cultural relationships of people of different ethnicities that she was introducing me to. And then we would go to the art fair uh, at, at, as a, uh, at, at Ann Arbor. And so I, this is when art began to have meaning to me. Mm -hmm. And Ron will tell you, we never moved anywhere. And in the first weekend, and certainly with Richard's help and his team at the, the University of Richmond, uh, the first thing I want before the furniture in place is art on the <laughs> <laughs> We understand. <laughs> what furniture? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. In, in some ways, the art becomes the centerpiece. It does. Um, it does. And I really, I can honestly say that I probably will pay more for art sometimes than I will for a piece of furniture. <laughs> You're in good company. You sure you haven't been here before. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm glad we've been brought together. Mm -hmm. oh. It's wonderful. So I'll, I'll vouch for what you said about wanting the art up before the furniture arrived. <laughs> that That's right. Quite wonderful. Uh, to follow, follow up on some of your experiences with artists, have you had any especially memorable experience with, with an artist or with uh, the gallery uh, associated with the artist? Mm. Uh -huh. Um, talk about you. <laughs> well, try to keep it pleasant. Uh, well, I guess it could be it could be either a pleasant or unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're keeping pleasant. 
You know, we, we had, um, I, I mean, I've met many, mm -hmm. many artists. Um, uh, I wasn't very timid. Uh, well, it, actually, I was. I was really intimidated by artists I would read about, and uh, and you know, and and um, I had probably canonized them. I was thinking they would be unapproachable, but we had a, a artist here, a good friend of mine, Mildred Thompson. Uh, she passed away two thousand three, I think. Yeah. Maybe. But anyway. Um, a uh, very good friend of mine, very, very smart lady. There's a beautiful piece in, in the uh, exhibition. But she would take the time and, and, and talk to me and speak to me. And uh, she got me beyond my fears. And uh, she, she would tell me greatness is always approachable. Mm -hmm. And uh, that gave me the courage to call John Wilson, Norma Morgan, Sam Gilliam, uh, I mean, cold call and, and introduce myself. And they were, and, and it's so true, uh, they were open. I, I've had studio visits with, with several artists mm -hmm. and uh, I've had the opportunities to sit down while they, uh, you know, even execute artwork, some of them, uh, just to be in their space and to learn. I've never had an art class before in my life. Uh, so um, I was, really taught how to read prints uh, from uh, some uh, master print makers. Uh, I've had the opportunity to sit down and uh, uh, watch the artist paint and they, they get me the understanding of color and value and composition and, and those things. And it actually taught me how to see work and uh, you know, how to know when, you know, when you do have a good print, it's just not. So that goes a long way. So when you go to purchase, uh, you want to make the best selection, you know, that you can. But uh, there's several, you know, stories and, and small talk and to get to know them. And uh, in getting to know them, I get to understand their work just a little bit better. Um, so, I mean, I, I think without giving you one specific uh, uh, relationship or experience with artists, you know, I just kind of do a broad view for you. Well, we had a very special, Betty and I had a special experience many, many years ago in Winston-Salem, North Carolina at the Delta Art Center in, in Winston-Salem with Elizabeth Catlett. Um, she oh. was there doing a show, and uh, she was there for about a week. And um, and I, I must confess, I knew very little. I mean, I don't, I don't even know that I knew her name at that particular time. But um, I, she was a fascinating person I, uh, with a very interesting life, and I just fell in love with her art. Yeah. And, and other art. She was just really amazing. I felt truly blessed. And then in addition to going to the to, to, to experience her art, um, I also uh, had a chance to play for her. Um, oh, wow. Dinner that was done in her honor and they asked me to, to, to uh, do a performance. Uh, so that was also very special too. Um, it's, interesting that you, it, okay. Okay. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Interesting that you should mention Elizabeth Catlin. We fell in love with her before we were able to purchase a piece from her. Kerry has, we have this great story. Kerry tells the story better, so he's gonna tell the story. <laughs> oh yeah, you mentioned Elizabeth Cat, but you know, unless you call her name, my memory <laughs> just comes and goes, but uh, she was one of my favorites. Absolutely, and still is, mm -hmm. absolute favorites. And uh, oh man, I was, I so wanted and Elizabeth Catlett work. Now I had a couple of prints um, by Catlett, but I wrote this letter <laughs> <laughs> to Cuernavaca, New Mexico. <laughs> and I told her that, you know, just, you know, told her what I did, who I was, and I had a couple of prints, but it's my heart's to desire to uh, have an Elizabeth Catlett sculpture. Yes. I just yes. want one. And uh, I mailed it off. I, I got her address from Spelman College. Uh, they had an, a Catlett exhibition. They knew well, and um, no, not Catlett. They had wrote me a beard right. and somebody. Anyway, we long worked to the uh, institution, and it's 
Remember, it's good to loan works to institutions. So uh, sometimes you'll you'll get access. I think you know you'll, you'll get they'll they might help you along the way. You know, and uh, I wrote her nothing, and uh, I knew she had an apartment in New York. I had that address as well, so I sent the letter there as well. You know, crickets. It's good to be a postman too. <laughs> That's right. Three, I think it was three months later. Uh, I come in from, we were at a Bible study and I, we, we didn't get in until it may have been about 10, 10 p.m. that evening. And um, we had, you remember the old answering machines, the phone machines? Oh, yeah. but anyway. We're uh, dating ourselves. <laughs> there was a message on the answering machine and this kind of rest sound tired. This voice said that I'll be in New York. I've been on a cruise, me and... Uh, I forgot her husband named uh, Poncho. I think we called him Poncho or something. But it, it, anyway, uh, I said, oh, she said, call me. Uh, call me this evening. So I'm thinking, you know, she's probably in her 80s now, late 70s, early 80s at that time. And uh, I'm thinking I want to be nice. Uh, I won't call her tonight. I'll wait until tomorrow so she's fresh. And I couldn't sleep. So wake up the next morning, get started, go out on my day. So I, I call, <clears throat> it's about 10 a.m. She answered the phone. And I say, this is Carrie Davis. I'm going to return your phone call. And that's as far as I got. She said, I told you to call me last night. I'm leaving. We're headed to Mexico. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I still had the phone and I was like, <laughs> no, <Nothing>. true story. <laughs> Nothing. Um, it may have been a week later. I get this card in the mail, uh, a card, and had one of her sculptures on it. And she said, "We are back in Mexico now." Uh, totally different tone. She sent me uh, uh, two images of something that she had available at the time that I may could reach for, <laughs> and. Uh, just totally pleasant and uh oh she gave me her phone number in mexico and i called we were able to work it all out and she sent me the sculpture that you have there yes. in oh, that, wow. that, that but i was so crushed <laughs> i was so crushed <laughs> we talked about it and laughed about it i maybe spoke to her two or three times later uh okay. but uh Geez, every time I look at that, that's pleasure and pain, my friend, <laughs> pleasure and pain. You know, speaking of the sculptures and moving outside of the walls to the floors and, you know, in the grounds, oh, yeah. my first piece is a, a head of Nigerian art piece. Richard, you've seen that one. Uh, and I, again, not knowledge, <laughs> you know, knowledge is greater than riches. So I was at this store when we were living in Austin, Texas, a little bit low. It looked almost like a hardware store with so many different types of things in the store. And I looked up and saw this headgear, this headpiece. And I, it, it, I was drawn to it. I went home and it still stayed with me. So I went back the next day I had no idea of the price of art of that nature at the time. And so when I realized it was certainly much more than I could leave the store having it, I bought, bought it with the, the, the person who owned the store said, by saying, can I put this on what we, we know to be layaway? Yes, and a year later, we have the piece and we have the piece here in Richmond now. Oh, nice. But it's it's amazing how things can speak to you and you go away and you can't leave it. Mm -hmm. And true. then you go back and if there are artists like the Elizabeth Catlitz and other people, they they work with you. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. We wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for <laughs> artists working with us. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking we we go back to um our role in uh, my role at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts and our a partnership in sponsoring uh, exhibits at the museum. 
of Black, uh, especially uh, the photography exhibits. Mm -hmm. And when, again, when we were growing up, if I had gone to a Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, I'm not sure that I would have seen anything as familiar as we do today. So we are honored to be able to be in a position to be sponsors of artwork that depicts our history and our, our culture um, uh, from the really the early 40s, 50s, mm -hmm. uh, even earlier than that mm. on. And so we've been able to do that uh, with both the Draper and the COVID. The Black, the, the black, uh, the black Photographer's Annual. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, right. Uh, oh, great. Sponsor that. And the, the, Co the Cohen, the Ho Co Moinga group. The, the Lewis Draper, Louis Draper. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah. and all of the, the Black photographers out of the New York area. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, two of, of the uh, photographers that we were proudest to support uh, was really in my life as a, as a, a student, student and as a per person growing up in Tuskegee. Oh. Uh, P.H. Polk, if you know the- Oh, yeah, Polk. that's from down in Tuskegee. Yeah. That's right. He took, he took our reception pictures. When we got married, we married in Detroit. Yeah. But we wow. had an exception in the chapel of Tuskegee Institute. And P.H. Pope took the pictures. And we have in the president's residence at the University of Richmond a picture with P.H. Pope holding his camera, which is very rare. Yeah. And a picture with me and Ron and my mother and a friend from Tuskegee. The other person whose uh, photography was is all has also been housed at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts, and they purchased pieces too by both photographers, is Chester Higgins. Right. And, and uh, so it's so nice to have been a child, a student, a peer, and a colleague of artists and photographers that you know, and also people who have struggled to maintain their art form and yet to now be acknowledged in museums, famous museums across the country. Mm -hmm. um, Betty, one thing you mentioned early on was the impact of when you were a child of visiting the home of an art collector. And I wonder, mm -hmm. yeah, and I wondered um, if, if both of you, all of you could share a little bit about how you've shared your collection. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Davis, I know that even though now you've got this exhibition that's touring nationally, you've always been interested in sharing your collection. Um, and I wonder if you all could, could talk a little bit about that. Um, well, Yes, we, uh, you know, I believe artists to be seen, mm -hmm. you know, why, why I'm sure whoever created the head of message, but why, why sit on it, you know, but um, yes, we have, you know, pretty much with our community, uh, like I say, church, mm -hmm. our church peers, our family, uh, our neighbors. So uh, anyone come by, uh, it's in your face, so you, you, you have to see it. And uh, we all barely say, well, take, or, or they'll ask, take me on a tour. Uh, <laughs> yes, put, yeah, take always, me on a tour, yes, just take right. me on a tour. And I'll start out and it, it, it keeps it fresh in my memory, but uh, which is not a difficult job because uh, as I walk through, again, it's memories that remind me of uh, the relationships I had with all of these different artists and, uh, so uh, yeah, we've been, been able to share. And again, uh, these are mostly very, very modest people and, and some who would never set foot in a museum. I right. never just had that notion. I didn't grow up with art and not, not in our home or anything like that. that. That bug hit me, you know, some years, years later, many years later, uh, but it's fun to share and, uh, I like to see fresh eyes walk into the home and they'll see artwork. And, you know, and they, they, don't, they wouldn't know Jacob Lawrence from Jacob's Ladder. So uh, there's nothing to persuade them one way or the other. So they're fresh eyes. And I'm just very interested in how they react to what they see. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, 
uh, I get pleasure out of sharing the work because it, it's always a conversation that, you know, it stimulates the mind and uh, there's a conversation to be had. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, that's a part of the Black experience we talk about, you know, in just in terms of what we can be in the way of hospitality in our homes and exposing people to things that they might not see, you know, in, in the larger community. I was thinking um, of the, um, the, the ways that my mother still lives in my heart, and that's through art. And the fact that one of my our artist friends, Ronald McDowell, I don't, uh, who is on faculty at Tuskegee University, did a portrait of my uh, siblings with my mother. Mm -hmm. um, and that is something that will live forever. And then he did a, a portrait of just my mother. And then he did a picture with me and my mother. And every day I can, I look in my mother's eyes and I talk with her because of the, the artistry of, you know, Ronald McDowell. What a beautiful memory. Wow. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have always uh, enjoyed sharing our art. And that we have in our home. But since we, um, when we went to Wheaton College in Massachusetts, where I was president for 10 years in 2004, we started um, including in our, along with our collection, some of the pieces from the Wheaton collection. And then we actually produced a, not exactly a catalog, but a, a, a sheet so, I, so we could remember. It's so every time we would have guests at the, at the president's home, we could talk about the, the artworks. And we've continued that here at the University of, of Pittsburgh as well. Um, and so now it's just part of you know, the routine. <laughs> we don't do that much entertaining uh, in, in, during, during the COVID time. But when we, we used to have two or three um, dinners here or receptions a week, and we always take people on a tour of the artworks. <laughs> And again, you know, we are grateful to uh, to Richard and Elizabeth and the whole team for uh, really hanging because that's the other thing we haven't talked about that. But there's an art form in hanging art. Yes, it is. And and uh, and it can be an expensive art form, and it's <laughs> like framing art. Uh, Sometimes the frame can cost more than the art. <laughs> and I learned that the hard way as a student at the University of Michigan, when I took my diplomas and I took uh, the little pictures that I had to the frame shop and I thought I'd be picking it up the next week and like a year later, I was still paying <laughs> on it. And, you know, it. But the things you learn as you get into things that you learn to love. Right, right. And the sacrifices you make in order to have those things in your life. Mm -hmm. Sure, well. I was thinking when we, the children, our kids were younger, they would have uh, visitors and their own friends would come over and hang out at the house. And one of the things we enjoy doing was sharing with our children's friends the art. And I have, girlfriends who have kids and it's amazing to see we have one who's really close to us she's an artist now she's mm. 18 and she's in college and she's an artist and she does a great job she's really a good artist and you just never know the lives that you touch just by opening up your home that's, mm -hmm. well, um, that's been our experience with the children yes and i want to go back to what sister betty was saying about that framing <laughs> You are preaching to the choir about the expense. You know, I had some carpentry skills. Uh -huh. I framed mm. for 17 years. And some of the work, it may, I'm sure it has to be some of the work that's hanging there now was acquired by a barter, that, that old African tradition. <laughs> that uh, quid pro quo. <laughs> I'll give you this if you do this for me. That's right. And uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I learned, but I learned also through framing about conservation. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, collectors, um, it's not just about uh, you know getting something you want to have in this, but you have a responsibility of being a steward, of taking care of that work. You have to preserve that work. At least I believe so, right. because yeah. uh, I mean, for generations to come. 
So uh, through the framing process, I did uh, learn how to protect it, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the acid-free materials and, you know, and all, all, of, all of that. So. You, you know what, and, and you talk about preserving. Not only are we preserving the, you know, the artwork, but we're also preserving a part of our history. We have an only daughter, Sarah Elizabeth Crutcher, and we hope that she will enjoy having some of the artwork that she has grown up with right. on her walls for the rest of her life. Absolutely. Absolutely. My, our children grew up with it as well. And um, well, they were with us on the journey because mm -hmm. uh, uh, some of the artists allowed them to paint, finger paint, mm -hmm. and do whatever while in the studios. You know, they were they were right there. Yeah. You know, they were right there. So they they have the memories, and they have work by That's some right. of the artists from children. Yeah. Uh, so I think they well, I know they have much better appreciation for it now mm -hmm. uh, than before. But just like anything, trying to make a child sit down and study piano <laughs> is just not in them, right? You know, but they appreciate it a little later on. That's right. So we're talking about the uh, art of collecting. Uh, and what advice would you all give to someone who wants to start collecting art? I would say dive in. Um, one, you know, don't be intimidated. And, you know, I just speak from experience. You know, I, 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 I used to go, well, you know, when I could have walked into gallery, just try to overhear conversations and, uh, you know, everybody using all of these superlatives and it like it's so deep and so, <laughs> but, you know, I would just say, don't be intimidated by anything like that. Um, be a student too, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, art, I mean, your opinion, what you see in art is not necessarily what someone else sees in art. Let nobody control your narrative. Uh, believe in what you believe in. You know, you, you just, you know, get at it. I would say look at art, look at art, look at art, but then educate what you're looking at. It's always very important to speak to artists. Again, they helped me uh, because they could art articulate something I could see, but I just couldn't quite tell you what. And I said, oh, that's right, that's right. But then there are things that you, you know, you may be different and you may pick it up right away. But again, no, no one can tell you what you like. Uh, no one can tell you your experience. Uh, you control that. So, you know, uh, I say go for it, you know, you anybody know, want to collect. Yeah, I agree, just begin. There really isn't a formula no. for, for creating things. And, you know, I say whatever touches your heart and let it be your choice because uh, you don't know what you don't know. And the, and, and the more you just allow yourself to appreciate art, it's like appreciating uh, a, a, a piece of uh, item like clothing. You know, it, no one can tell you not to like one piece over another piece. You choose that. Well, it, you can maybe simplify it by saying, if I like this, then maybe I'll like that. Mm -hmm. And transfer for it to art. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, my siblings and I all have art on our walls, but some of us have different forms of art, yes. you know? But I'm so happy to, that we have all grown now past the three art pieces on the <laughs> <laughs> A long way, we come yes. a long way. Yeah, and our daughter has pieces on her wall, mm -hmm. but they're her choices. But to Carrie was my teacher. Um, he was collecting before we got married and he would say the same thing. That was his message to me, buy what you like first and then you come on and elevate and educate yourself, get to know more about um, the artists and the art. So I think that's so important that you, you like it, you know, and then you're able to uh, speak to it and be able to learn more about it and, and share it. Um, my, uh, I was thinking about my children, how, how different they are. My daughter, she's really uh, into graphic mm -hmm. art. She liked these paintings on the wall and everything. 
my son is different. He's like Mr. President there. He loves music. He loves music. And any form, he loves music. Uh, and his, the art, even the art selection, if it doesn't have an interest instrument in it, he really, I mean, <laughs> you know, he passed right by. But uh, he loves um, he loves music and any, anything that has music. And I say, well, music is truly an art form. Uh, that's that's what he does. Does he listen and play, or does does he have a a, a, a musical instrument that he plays, or he plays does he tuba. He plays tuba. He he plays tuba and he does. Something with these keyboard things they they he have. He writes now. music. He writes oh, a little yeah. bit. Well. Yeah. He but did. tell him I have a keyboard too. Uh, <laughs> My husband did. says I don't have a real piano. I have a keyboard. Oh, okay. So you can play? I can play at, <laughs> and I play by ear, and that uh, is okay. a form too. Yeah, oh, oh, that yeah. is. I have a sister who plays by ear and she's a music director, but that's what she learned. She learned with her ear first. So yes, definitely. Um, well, it's important to, to hone those musical skills with your ear. That's very important. That's right. But you know, I, in terms of collecting, I, I tell folks all the time, I mean, if, if you're new at it, just go, go to an art gallery or to an art museum. I mean, I actually, I would prefer, I would say really a smaller art gallery because, you know, there's, like there, the there's less here. there <laughs> and we, and, and just go look around and see <laughs> what, you know, what, what you like, because it's very personal. It has to be very personal. Yeah. You know, and, and because I grew up in a segregated community, I could not have imagined maybe years ago that I would ever end up at a University of Richmond and see an exhibit mm -hmm. by Carrie and Betty Davis, owned by Carrie and Betty Davis. Yeah. Look at how far we have come. Yeah. Yes, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. No, I appreciate, I appreciate the university's vision for being so bicultural and cross-cultural mm -hmm. in the uh, choosing of art that really everybody can value and appreciate. Mm -hmm. Well, I think now I'm going to um, ask my colleague, Heather Campbell, she's curator of museum programs to pop in and she has been keeping an eye on the Q&A. And so she'll ask everyone some, some questions from people who are listening in. Okay, so we have some good questions. Um, the first one is a statement and a question. I think it's great that more mainstream art museums are starting to acquire artworks by African-American artists and people of color. How do you feel about this latest shift? Long overdue. <laughs> Long overdue is what I would say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, so it's about time. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yes. it, it is, um, you know, if, if you, if you're if you're watching this and you're in Richmond or if you're in Atlanta, you you have to see this exhibit. It's it's just it's it's just mind-boggling the the many different kinds of approaches to art that you will behold when you when you see it. Um, so I think I think I, I I'm I'm thrilled. I mean I'm thrilled that Dr. Betty and I um, were uh, two of the people in Richmond who helped support. The Kahindi Wiley, the, the uh, um, statue that we have, Rumors of War. I mean, this is, we've come a long way and it's, and it's just about time. I, yeah, I, I totally, I totally agree. Uh, it's, it's just long overdue. And, you know, one fact is, you know, if you're a museum or institution uh, portraying artwork and you, uh, your goal is to portray American art. Uh, that story is incomplete without African American because African Americans are American and they are definitely a part of the American scene. Mm -hmm. So if you hyphenated African American art, uh, African American art is American art. Yes. So, you know, complete the story. And I'm too very glad to see, uh, you know, you finally come around and, and bring in works um, by 
what I call are under-recognized artists because they haven't had that opportunity to be shown. Mm -hmm. So it, I think it's a, it's a great service to art in general and, um, and the institutions that, uh, that who, who are on board now. I also think that, uh, as, as, you, as we mentioned, it completes American history. Right. To have um, uh, a photography of, of Black people and, and, and people of color in certain roles that have helped to build America. Mm -hmm. And to see them on the walls and, and not in, in pictures where you have no relationship to that period or to that person, but to walk in and see people in coveralls or, or, or Black women with head wraps on or hat, you know, I mean, look at a child seeing that and where that child might be in their own mind of wanting to uh, go to that museum 25 or 35 years from now because they saw themselves in an earlier age than we did when we first started going to a lot of the major museums. So here is another good question. Um, what artwork do you wish you could acquire right now? Mm. <laughs> okay. I certainly would love a Robert Bearden piece. I'm blanking. <laughs> well, I'll continue and then I'm going to. Oh, yeah, I'm go right to ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, what I require of what? Right. Now. I mean, there's so so many, um, and we've been so blessed to get. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, maybe a Hale Woodruff. Yeah. Um, Hale Woodruff. Uh, he spent a lot of time here in Atlanta and um, founded the uh, collection up at Clark Atlanta University. We have a small representation of his work, but I I would like a you know mm -hmm. something substantial by Hale Woodruff. No. Nice. Yeah. There is a there is a, a portrait of Marian Anderson in the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts that I would love to have <laughs> in my home. I, I, I love Mary. I heard one of Marian Anderson's last concerts when I was wow. a little boy in elementary school. Uh, school went. And uh, that's that I can remember my first time going to the, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. And just turning the corner and looking up at this, it's a, it's a large uh, painting. I can't I'm forgetting who the artist was, mm -hmm. but that's one that I would really want. And also, I mean, one of Jacob Lawrence series. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I want the whole series. So. That's right. <laughs> and <I> just <laughs> <laughs> this one. Yeah, our daughter's favorite color is yellow. And every time I look up, go to the museum and see Mary and Anderson, yeah. I make up the mm -hmm. relationship that Sarah might have had to Marian Anderson. So is there an artwork that got away from you that you wanted to acquire that um, you just couldn't get, somebody else got it before you did? Uh, yeah, most of the work I wanted got away. No, <laughs> 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 it seems. I know. Uh, you know what? Um, we talked a little bit about a semi Knox the other day. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just wanted to share this experience, not necessarily that work. Uh, uh, early on, I, I uh, we were at one of the National Black Arts Festival, and that's where I first saw and met and introduced to semi Knox work. Mm -hmm. And uh, it. Uh, I remember walking down the head in the mall, walking down the mall, and I saw, wow, who has this portrait of a Romare Bearden and David Driscoll? And um, the closer I got to it, the closer I got, it was not a portrait. It was a painting. I was just amazed at how realistic it was. And uh, we, out of, I mean, it, out of our price range, so it wasn't even a consideration. 
but I looked at some of the smaller things that, that we saw and uh, even to, you know, some steel lifes there. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the cousins with us uh, was, we saw just a little small painting of strawberries and they thought, well, this would look great in my kitchen and this would, you know, and um, I, I, I loved it too. But I said, strawberries, I, I'm, I'm looking for, hey, I'm looking for, <laughs> you know, something, so something expressed my ethnicity and this and that. And to this day, I am so ashamed that I walked away from that. Good work is good work. I just wasn't there at that time. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm just sorry I walked away. And, you know, and he's a, a artist of great stature now and all of that. But I didn't buy what I I liked at that time. I, I walked away from it. So I, you know, there's a few stories like that that I should have, but I didn't. It's interesting that you mentioned Simi Knox because that that is an instance of uh, I had wanted him when I was getting ready to step down from Wheaton to do my portrait, my president, my official presidential portrait. And, um, and I was introduced to him from a, but through a, a trustee. And, um, and he was not, he, I, I actually contacted him too late and he wasn't able to, to do it. He had too many other things to do. Uh, and so I just, I'm, I'm, I just talked to him recently and I'm hoping to get him to do my portrait here at the University of Richmond. Okay, well, if, if that goes well, yes. that's Ask the brother, could he spare a couple of strawberries? <laughs> Just two strawberries. I'll ask you about those strawberries. Exactly. I know when you we know we just we just acquired a piece by Claude Lawrence. And even though sometimes for me, I don't really know a lot about the artist other than what somebody tells me. Ron and I can be drawn to things and learn them along the way. I'm glad we brought that piece, and I hope we didn't. I, you know, I hope that it it increases in value versus decreasing in value. <laughs> I guess I maybe maybe I can ask this question of the two of you: Have you ever bought a piece and it decreased in value? Hmm, decrease. Um, well, when you say uh, decrease in value, I, I'll take that meaning uh, lower than what we yeah. paid for. Right. Right. No, it, it don't get much slower. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I don't. I don't think. I don't yeah. think so. You know. Okay. I, I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. We'll get back to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just pop in and mention, I think that painting, um, Dr. Scratcher, that you're referring to is by Beaufort Delaney. I looked it up on the VMFA website, oh, the Marion Williamson. Oh, thank you. Yes, Marion thank Anderson. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. Yes, I know that piece. Wow. That, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, that's I, different. I, I know. I know. That piece. Well, if it goes missing at the museum, we know where <laughs> to find it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You could hide it there much better than here. I'm telling you. <laughs> Okay, so can you tell the audience why you think it's so important and meaningful for you to collect African-American art? Are you asking for African-Americans why it's meaningful? No, just why is it important that you collect African-American art? Well, uh, for me, it's a part of the legacy in our home that I'd like to leave. Uh, because we not only collect African-American art, but we collect art. And it just happens that most of it are, are the pieces that we've collected have been all, um, are art by African-Americans. That's how I'd like to say it. Can you agree with that? Yeah, yeah I and mean, I would agree. Yeah. But with the exception of a Jasper John's work that we have, all of our work is uh, African American, and uh, and and I even got the uh, Jasper Judge from an African <laughs> from an artist uh, out, out out of his collection. Um, he was friends with Jasper John and piece I like. Uh, oh uh, yeah, I think it's important uh, to collect African American art. Um, 
if I don't, who will? Mm -hmm. um, we have a story to tell as well. And um, by us collecting African-American art, or art in general, you help feed into that art ecosystem. So they'll, you know, if you collect it, they'll be able to produce it. So uh, we're, we're champions of collecting uh, African-American art. And that's why I think it's important. And I, I really enjoy telling the stories about, I mean, to, to educating people about the artists themselves, mm -hmm. and as well as the, the, uh, the, the work the, because many people are not aware of some of the artists, some of the African-American artists uh, whose art we have in our home. I can, I can honestly say cross-culturally, I have learned as much about African-American art over the years uh, by as many of my white colleagues as I, as I have uh, my black colleagues and especially in the museum world. Mm -hmm. So that I, I find that in uh, all in in my world we get uh, to see the art on on the walls of many different people. Okay, um, Mr. Davis and uh, Mrs. Davis, we have a question about your Sam Gillian artwork. Um, how did you inquire it? And uh, do you have more than one piece? I know you have a piece in the show that we have. Do you have more than one? Uh, yes, uh, there's one in the other room. Back there. <laughs> but um, we, we were in DC uh, one year uh, working with Betty and uh, uh, I had an opportunity. My <laughs> 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 other life, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had an opportunity to go by a studio. And, uh, and it, what, what an, an amazing experience. Mm. He was just so kind. And uh, he, you know, he spoke to us. He talked to us as we walked through. And I'm looking at all the, the huge Drake paintings and all the Sam Gilliam works. Um, and you know we had gotten to a flat file, and he was just showing us things. And um, I saw that work, and ah, I love that. You know, I just love the work. And he hesitated for a moment, but he sold it to us. So we walked away with it. And not only that, uh, he given uh, one of the young ladies who came with us. Uh, just a, a token out of his flat file, yes. but very generous very. like that, very generous like that. And uh, I'll never forget that we took, every time I go, I always take a lot of pictures and, and things mm -hmm. to remind me of our experiences. And, and I see where the place they have in history now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just stop and say, we, we are blessed. We really are blessed because there are many artists that we've, had that opportunity to go into their homes mm -hmm. and to just sit down and have a chat, you know. And uh, I love because they, uh, the older artist has history um, that, you know, it's, it, they just make it all come to life when they sit down and tell the story, you know. So, uh, yeah, that was a Sam Gilliam yeah, visit. That's, that's how we acquired that particular work. Mm -hmm. So we have a question about how you share information with other collectors. Um, and I'm assuming they mean, do you share secrets with other collectors? <laughs> do you uh, have stories that you share about collecting artworks? Um, do you give each other pointers uh, maybe uh, when you're sharing with other collectors? Um, well, as far as I, I go, if, if that collector is a friend, uh, we, we share stories and we, uh, it, you know, after collecting for 35, almost 40 years, you, you, there is a network that's developed amongst friends and, uh, and, you know, some of our artists included in that because some of the artists are collectors as well. So, um, 
Yeah, just, I mean, sharing stories or, you know, let you know of if, you know, you're interested in a certain work or something, they may have some pre-publication opportunities to where you can get in before something is produced. Uh, if it's somebody you've been looking at for a long time or work you appreciate. But uh, if, you know, if, if sharing stories are given pointers, I'm willing to talk to about anybody, but friends, um, there's, there's something special there. You know, it's a little bit more intimate in your discussions. All right, well, um, I think this comes to the, the end of our evening. I am definitely gonna hit you up, um, Mr. and Mrs. Davis for some pointers on collecting now, because I'm hoping I'm a friend in the inner circle. Um, I want to thank you both so much for sharing, you know, your your journey um, and your passion of collecting. And I want to thank the Doctors Crutchers as well um, for sharing about your own passion for for collecting and for supporting artists. Um, and I want to thank everyone who listened in. Um, this interview is one of a series of programs that the University of Museums is conducting in conjunction with the exhibition, Memories and Inspiration, the Carrie C. Betty Davis Collection of African American Art. Um, all of these uh, talks will be posted on our website during and after the exhibition is on view. So again, I just want to say thank you so much um, to all of you for participating and to those of you who listened in. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Take yeah. care. Look, All right. Right. You take Look care. Look forward to seeing you in, in Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Have a good night. Take okay. care. Bye-bye.